G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and in today's video we are going to have another look at an all Australian based video and the premise of this video is trying to pick out each team's best chance of an all Australian smoky. So, what do I mean by smoky? We should probably be pretty clear about what the criteria is. To start with, if a player has been all Australian before, I'm not going to consider them a smoky. In some cases, I might pick someone who has been in the all Australian squad before, but I suppose what we're looking at for this video is a player from each club who is within touching distance of potentially getting an all Australian jumper this year, and by extension could have a bit of a breakout year. So it's just a different way of framing players to look out for who could have a big year for their individual clubs and each club's best chance of getting someone unexpectedly into the All-Australian team. Now, I have already done a video predicting this year's All-Australian team. It is currently up members only, which means that in about half a week it will drop. But in today's video, I'm going to go through each team and pick out their best outside chance. So we're going to do it alphabetically this time. I like mixing up the order and now we're going back to the traditional alphabetical order, which means I'm going to start with the Adelaide Crows. And I would probably say looking at their best 22 outside of the obvious candidates like your Dawson and Walker come to mind. They are kind of littered with a lot of young players that are probably just a little, it's a little bit early to say they're an all Australian chance. I've talked about Mitch Hinge in a previous video. However, I'm going to make this one a little bit different. And I'll probably say Isaac Rankin. I don't think he's actually a million miles off being in all Australian contention, considering he's only 23 years of age. And as a small forward, has putting up pretty solid numbers for well, a couple of years in a row and had a good first year at Adelaide, kicking 36 goals, getting about 16 touches a game. And you think as this Adelaide team improves, as he starts to mature, there's absolutely no reason why he could and kick 50 to 55 goals in a season. And that's kind of the threshold where I'd expect a player to really be in all Australian contention for a small forward spot. So I think Isaac Rankin might be that outside chance for Adelaide. I could see it happening this year. For the Brisbane Lions, again, this one is tough because I, I couldn't see any really obvious candidates other than Hugh McCluggage, which might be a little bit too obvious. But I'm going to say Hugh McCluggage hasn't been all Australian before, so qualifies by the loose criteria that I set. Has been in the squad before, but wasn't in the squad last year. So I think for all intents and purposes, qualifies as a smoky to get into the team this year. Average about 22 touches a game last year, a little bit down from his usual output, but still a very good player. And I've made the case why we could see a big increase from him this year. Not only are some of other Brisbane midfielders uh, starting to age a little bit, but he is also in a contract year and turning 26 this year. I think Hugh McCluggage as a smoke for the All-Australian team is not a bad bet. Then we've got Carlton, and again, another team where there's a lot of players that are probably too young to get really anywhere near it, or they've been All-Australian before, or I just don't think their ceiling is of being All-Australian quality, which left me with one obvious option, and I think that's probably Adam Chera, who had a really good year in 2023, 25 touches, five clearances. It's really competitive to try and get an All-Australian spot, and I do think his teammate in Sam Walsh is more likely to get a spot over Chera. So I think this is a bit of an outside chance, but he is only 24, so it's still within the realm of possibility that we see a big improvement for him as he gets to this 25, 26 range, and he's not that far from it. So as far as Smokies go, he's probably the one for Carlton that I would say. I think it's a little bit early for guys like Jesse Motlop. For Collingwood, I have talked about this guy already, and I will say Isaac Quainer is probably their best chance for a real Smoky. Bobby Hill also came to mind, obviously, his grand final, but we obviously don't want to have too much recency bias there compared to someone like Quain or who has been a consistent good quality player for a while now and again just turned 24 and I think it's inevitable he's going to be in the mix for all Australian whether that's this year I'm not too sure but great interceptor great speed great rebound has AA potential and I think qualifies as probably Collingwood's best smoky going into 2024 then there's Essendon and uh, I juggled between a few plays here I suppose Mason Redmond would qualify however I feel like I've talked about Redmond a little bit so for the sake of mixing it up a little bit I'll point out Nick Martin who at 22 years of age still has you know presumably his best football ahead of him. While he played a lot of his best footy so far on a wing, uh, it does seem like he's earmarked for a halfback role which could see him find the ball a little bit more, a little bit more consistently, which would probably help him in an AA push. Is it probably a little bit more competitive trying to go for a halfback flank spot in this team? I think I've said this before, but yeah, probably. But I still think he probably is their best candidate. I considered guys like Caldwell. I think he's probably a little bit too far back. Kyle Langford wasn't a terrible shout for this, but I do wonder how much he can improve on a 51-goal season. Redmond's probably the more likely of the two, if I'm being honest, but Nick Martin isn't a bad smoky. For Fremantle, I think that player is Hayden Young. 
I think it's a little bit early for guys like Jai Amos, for instance. Brennan Cox hasn't been All-Australian before, but I, I suppose loosely in my head, I feel like because he's been around the mark for a little while now, is less of a, a genuine smoky, if that makes sense. So to mix it up, I think it might be Hayden Young. He sort of moved into the midfield late last year with some pretty good effect, had some really good games towards the back end of the year, I think against Brisbane in particular, and has some nice traits. I think the only thing that works against Young for an All-Australian spot specifically will be the extent to which he splits his time between backline and midfield, because if he's playing 50-50, it might be hard to get an All-Australian spot. That being said, we did see Nick Dacos do it last year. Considering he hasn't really ever been in the frame for an All-Australian spot, I think he qualifies as a smoky, and I think he will have a great year. For the Geelong Footy Club, I think that player is clearly Ollie Henry. Uh, Brian Myers is another good shout, but I would like to acknowledge Ollie Henry here for 41 goals last year. I think the threshold for becoming an All-Australian medium forward, it will be competitive, but if he gets to that 55-goal mark, then I think he's absolutely within the frame of getting an All-Australian spot. Again, it's going to be competitive. Is he probably competing with guys like Toby Green? And I think it is a long shot, but you also factor in he'll be a year older. He's still like well and truly before hitting his prime. Uh, but I do expect Geelong probably will get better. I think if the midfield gets more supply to the forwards, then Ollie Henry has a decent chance of hitting 50, 55 goals. For Gold Coast, you could pick out a handful of options. I will go with the most obvious in this particular case and say Noah Anderson, and he probably counts as a smoky just. He did get 22 Brownlow votes last year. Didn't make All-Australian, but made the squad. Six and a half clearances a game, 27 touches, super consistent, and only 22 years of age. So his best football is still ahead of him. I suppose it'd be a smoky to be All-Australian as young as 23, but you know, Caleb Sarong did it last year. So I think Anderson is not a bad shout for AA. For the Giants, I juggled between a couple of players. I had Brent Daniels in there originally, but I think I will say Connor Iden, and I don't want to seem too repetitive. If, you, if you're someone who watches a lot of my content, you will pick up on the same trends in some of the videos. And so I'm trying not to be repetitive while also trying to remain consistent in my views. So I'm going to say that player is Connor Iden. I don't think he's that far off all Australian quality as it currently stands. Again, a little bit competitive for those spots, but a sort of in-between size at 193 centimeters and shown a good ability to be versatile on the tall forwards and the small forwards. Six in the Giants, best and fairest. I think that he's just about arrived and I think there is actually a good chance he becomes all Australian. You can't really predict all Australians because it's dependent so much on availability, but on quality, I think Arden is pretty much there. For Hawthorne, I think there is one obvious case here, and I think that is Mitch Lewis. And I suppose it's a smoky when you consider I don't know if he's ever played more than 15 games in a season. So 37 goals last year from 15 games, 36 the year before. Going at a very reasonable clip there, six marks a game. This could be the year he jumps to elite. Again, competitive for key forward spots. He's probably going to have to hit that 65-70 goal threshold, but I don't think that is beyond him on talent. It will depend a bit, you think, on how... Hawthorne improve this year. For the Melbourne Footy Club, I like this pick a lot. This is one of my favorite smoky picks, and I'm going to say Bailey Fritch could be that player. I think almost gotten a little bit underrated or not underrated in his premiership year, but since then, I feel like the talk about how good this guy actually is has diminished, at least from my perception. It's all about perception, but his goal tallies are 59 goals, 55 goals, and 38 from 17 last year. Those are his last three seasons. Only just turned 27, so I think he's pretty much there in terms of output. It's just about the ingredients being right. Other players outperforming him in his specific role as a medium forward. Probably another player competing with Ollie Henry, who I talked about there. Melbourne probably need to have a good year delivering the ball inside 50, uh, but I think he is a key player for them, and I don't think it's out of his wheelhouse to get his first All-Australian this year. Then we got North Melbourne, and this one um, is probably somewhat simple, at least in my opinion. I Look, I talk about LDU a lot on this channel, so I will go with someone different as a real real out-of-the-box smoky. I don't, I don't think it's actually crazy that Harry Sheasel gets an All-Australian jumper in his second season. So I talked previously on this channel how I think that his future may lie forward of center as a forward midfielder. I've seen no indication that that is going to happen this year. So I'm going to assume that he's a running defender again. And when you extrapolate the performance of, of his first season, he had the most disposals on debut in something like 40 years. And I think in his first five games, he touched the ball more than 30 times. So you extrapolate that. If you can play out the season even longer, like look what Nick Dacos did. If you follow that model, I don't think it's crazy to suggest that Harry Sheasel could be a smoky for the All-Australian team this year. By contrast, I think all of the other North Melbourne young talent is a little bit too young. But Sheasel's not that far off it. For Port Adelaide, I'm a little bit uneasy about this one, but looking at their list and, and trying to find real candidates for this particular video, 
then Jason Horn Francis probably is the closest to that. And he did have a pretty good year last year. It has to be said. 17 and a half disposals, 16 goals from 24 games and polled 16 Brownlow votes. Now I know there was a contentious three vote game in there, but let's say you erase that and assume they got it wrong. 13 Brownlow votes in his second season is not bad for the position he plays as like a forward midfielder, four inside fifties a game. I think it's a little bit early for him, but he is the sort of player who could explode randomly and be better than you expect, earlier than you expect. I think I think he's eventually going to be an All-Australian, whether it happens in year three. I'm a little bit uneasy about it, but he probably is the one that fits this criteria for Port Adelaide. Then we've got Richmond, and again, another tricky one. So we're dealing with a team here who's probably top-heavy in the sense that a lot of their best players uh, have pretty much been All-Australian before. Then there's someone like Taranto who got damn close last year, but is almost too good to be considered a smoky. And again, it's a little bit arbitrary. So to throw a different one out there, I'll say Liam Baker. Now, Liam Baker actually had a pretty good year from what I can tell. The only thing that worked against him, specifically for an Australian chance this year, is that he does get thrown around the field a little bit. And I think he spent a little bit more forward time this year with 12 goals. But I think he's a very clean player, very decisive, very impactful. Like if he runs through the midfield and plays forward a little bit more or potentially back and forward, maybe he gets a crack. But to be honest, the doing this one was a little bit hard for Richmond. And to clarify, that's because I sort of eliminated Taranto from this. He could absolutely win all Australian this year. I just thought, considering how good he was last year, probably a little bit cheap to have him as a genuine smoky. For St Kilda, I'm big on their youth. I've been talking them up all summer, and I think it's still a little bit early for a lot of the guys that I've talked up. So I will go with a player that is probably going to enter his prime this year, and I'd say that's Max King. I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility at all that he gives the Coleman a shake. I think St Kilda will be a good side this year to some extent if they can fix their forward line efficiency issues. But look at his output, 38 goals from 20 games last year, 52 from 22 the year before, and 28 from 11 the year before that. So, you know, going at that rate, about two goals a game for his career so far is a pretty damn good start when you assume that his prime is still ahead of him. And this could be the year. So if the Saints get the ball inside 50 consistently and accurately this year, I think Max King's absolutely got a chance of being all Australian. For the Sydney Swans, uh, phew, the, the one that came to mind was probably Papley, but again, because he's sort of been in the mix, I didn't consider him a, a smoky by that logic. I will, I will double down on a player I've talked about before and say Nick Blakey. Really good running defender. Came second in their best and fairest. Um, 20 disposals a game, 80% efficiency. Look at the speed this guy has and his rebound and the dare that he plays with. I think there's an all-Australian quality player in there. So I'd say as a smoky, he's not a bad shout. For West Coast, again, <laughs> this is tricky. I think there's one candidate, really, and that's Oscar Allen. 53 goals from 23 games this year. Seventh in the common, I think, or at least uh, seventh leading goal kicker. I think he might have been top five when the season ended. I don't think it's super realistic that Oscar Allen is an AA chance this year, considering West Coast are probably going to struggle to get the ball inside 50, and there's some elite talent out there. But on quality, he's clearly the best candidate. For the Western Bulldogs, this one, um, again, tough because I feel like a lot of their star-studded team have probably been all Australian before looking through it. So picking out a guy who hasn't done it yet, that hasn't gotten super close, but is a high quality player. And that is Ed Richards of a halfback flank. Been a pretty good player for a little while now. And I think I highlighted him in my underrated players video. Again, 2017 draft, which means he's 24, which means he's only going to get better. You extrapolate his current output. I don't think it's crazy that Ed Richards wins an All-Australian jumper this year. Other smokers that come to mind, uh, I think it's a little bit early for Jamara. Aaron Norton is a sneaky chance if he has a really good year in front of goal. Waitman is not a bad shout, but again, probably a little bit early to my mind. Um, but like I said, a lot of their best players have already won an All-Australian jumper, so it didn't quite fit the criteria. Anyway, guys, that was tough. Trying to pick an All-Australian smoky for each of the 18 clubs. But as always, I look forward to your input. Let me know what I got right and what I got wrong. I appreciate you guys watching the videos through this preseason, and I can't wait for all the action to kick off. So for now, I'll say goodbye, and I'll see you in the next one.